Hello everyone and welcome back to our cozy little space here on the internet. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. It is a blessing, it is an honor to spend time with you today. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be breaking down the astrological transits. Everything that is that we can expect, not only globally, but also in our own intimate lives. Now this week in particular, there are a few transits that are going to feel like a welcomed breath of fresh air. Specifically, Neptune turning direct, finally, officially, in the sign of Pisces. So, grab some coffee, grab some tea, get some water, get cozy, meet me in the next timestamp or in the moments to come, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, darlings, I officially have the astrological chart pulled up in front of me. I'm going to pop it up on the screen so you can see it, so we can go through these transits together one by one. So the first transit that is standing out to me and the one that I really want to encourage you to take notes on is the fact that on June 30th of this year, Neptune turned, um, went retrograde. And now December 6th, this week, Wednesday, Neptune is finally moving direct. For those of you guys that need a little recap or a refresh on what is the significance of, of Neptune? Why is this so important? Why has this, or how has this been impacting my life? Everyone is going to be different depending on your astrology chart and depending on where Neptune falls within your chart, also what Pisces rules. But specifically, it connects us all intimately to the realms of our intuition, subconscious, our psychology, the shadow aspects of our mind, and vibrations as we know it now that's surface level so when neptune turns direct or when neptune is retrograde those energies that it rules tend to get a little bit cloudy and sometimes you can find yourself feeling lost in the sauce as i like to call it lost in the sauce and the energies around you you can feel a little bit dissociating you can feel that sub subconscious issues start to show up to resurface you might even see that some of your internal fears are projecting in your in your reality in your world these tend to bring tumultuous vibes um, that ultimately end up making us kind of migrate to heal those places whether that be through therapy through counseling through journaling it's not always difficult these transits the other side of this is you might be questioning your your practice your faith your direction your purpose even the meaning of relationships all across the board it can really have you asking yourself what is real not just in how you view the world around you but what is real in people who and what can you count on? Can you count on yourself? What happens when life gets real? What happens when life gets a little too serious? Do you dissociate? Do you separate yourself? Do you run? Do you hide? Do you bury your head in the sand? All of these questions are not meant to confront you and put your back against the wall. They're meant to reveal to you how, how you move through your own healing and how you show up for yourself and also subconscious internal beliefs that shape you now in this moment so when neptune is retrograde especially in the sign that it rules pisces since june 30th a lot of our those energies have been unearthed right um and it can be very deceptive Number one, because Neptune retrograde, especially in the sign of Pisces, literally rules the realms of deception. In other people, you can find yourself being feeling lied to. You may find that you yourself are like, am I living a lie? Like, am it, is this who I am? You know, those, those deeper questions get called up to the forefront. But beyond that, sometimes when I say deception, sometimes what it's showing is how we kind of lie to ourselves, the stories that we tell ourselves to make life more worth it, to make 
make it make more sense. When Nep when Pisces sorry when Neptune is retrograde in the sign of Pisces, what stories were you telling yourself? What stories were others telling you? What did life feel like? How did you manage and how did you swim through those tumultuous waters? Did it feel easy? Did you feel lost? Did you feel discombobulated? Did you feel disoriented? And if you wanted to take this even further, you could look at your own chart, your own natal chart, and see where Neptune is currently transiting in your throughout your chart. What does Pisces rule within your chart? Let's say it rules your 12th house. This could have felt like an attack or an opportunity to heal, depending on where you're at in your life and depending on your trans, like how the transits are in, in, impacting you in your needle chart. This could have felt like an attack or an opportunity to work on the subconscious. You could have felt like you were dealing with a lot of secrets. You could have felt like you were dealing with a lot of deception. You could have felt like completely retreating from the world. You might have felt like, listen, I have had enough of the lie of what society tells us that this is the way that we have to live our lives. I reject it. I'm questioning it. I don't, I'm not digesting it in the right, in the way that they want me to. I'm like expelling it, rejecting it. Sorry about that fam, my puppies are protecting the house. <laughs> so what I was saying was that with that transit, this is an example, not everybody's gonna feel this way, but I'm sure many of you guys can see what it is that I'm saying and then apply it to where it is that it's meant to be applied within your life based upon how these transits have been impacting you, influencing you. Um, yeah, you might have felt like, listen, I'm going to separate myself and re pursue my own discovery of where I feel like there's a huge question mark. Why do I accept this? Why does this have to be my normal? Why is this even the reality? Who told me that this is my reality? These questions, even though we don't, sometimes we can laugh at them because they're just like, wow, it's not that serious. This is what Neptune transit through Pisces brings up. And when it's retrograde, we find ourselves kind of tumbling back into that mindset, into that mentality, into that vibration of why do I accept this as my reality? What is it that I'm believing in? Does it really belong on this pedestal? Does this need to be my life? It really has you kind of reconsidering almost like an existential crisis or a rebirth of sorts. So now that Neptune is moving direct on the six, this is going to give you almost an immediate sense of, I don't say closure, but acceptance. For many of you, when Neptune was retrograde since June, from late the late, later part of June, June 30th, it had you reconsidering a lot, like sorting through your brain, resorting through your brain. Why? Like that could be the huge issue. Why? Or who am I? Or why am I here? Why are we doing this? Do I see this working? Why do I accept this? It's almost like a rejection so that you can rebalance, reconsider, and rewrite yourself so that you can be reborn, but from a more spiritual perspective. Now that Neptune is turning direct, it's almost as if that sortation of all of that, which can feel very tumultuous and uproot you, like you could, again, think about this, like your, how you would have accepted reality, how you've accepted normal, what you believed about yourself, what you believed about friendships or relationships, those things have been uprooted, they've been pulled. Or if we're gonna go into the realms of Neptune and Pisces, they were drowned. They could not make it across the ocean. They could not go with us where we are going. So somehow we've had to find that way to kind of let it go. Now that Neptune is moving direct in the sign of Pisces, the overarching energy that is that I'm getting, that I feel every single one of you, it's gonna be the gift that spirit has given you is the, the gift of surrender. The gift of surrender. And that can be tough because it's, it's a word that we sprinkle around very often in the spirituality community, but do we actually know how to practice it? We can say that we're surrendering, but sometimes it's more like a, a sense of defeat, or it could be a sense of anger, or it could be a sense of, um, you know, losing your, losing something, like something major about yourself. So it's not that you're necessarily surrendering in peace, it's more that 
because you can still even be ruminating on it. And when Neptune is moving through the sign of Pisces, when, when it was retrograde, um, the, the idea of rumination and anxiety and tension and depression are, is very, very real. So now that Neptune is now moving direct in, in the sign of Pisces, finally direct, again, December 6th, this idea of true surrender and true peace is something that will may, be made more understood to you simply because when you are sorting through it during the retrograde cycle, you have got to the point along your journey where there are many things that you have sorted through them so much, tried to process them so much that you might have even now at this point feel so exhausted that surrender and letting go is the only outcome and sometimes you if in that your the anxiety that you felt trying to figure it out trying to battle within yourself is what is needed to actually make you find that letting go which was your worst fear or totally releasing the outcome which was again your worst fear and something that you're fighting against or you might say that you were doing, but internally there was a battle, somehow that is a relief. And when Neptune is now direct in the sign of Pisces, you're gonna feel that. That is how we're going to end this year. That's how we're gonna start the new year. I cannot control what happens next. I can only look after myself. I can only prioritize my peace. I can only do what I can. This thing does not define me. This thing does not shape me. This thing that was everything to me, now I realized was not a lie, but just not the story that I gave it, was not the story that I told for it. And I have to see it for what it is. That is now the mentality, now that Neptune is moving direct in the sign of Pisces. So let's go ahead and move on to our next transit that is really standing out to me that I wanna to talk to you guys about. And that's gonna be on Thursday, December 7th. This is where the sun is going to be in a beautiful trine with Chiron, who has been dealing out some really major intense lessons when it comes to how we identify ourselves, our internal strength, our masculine side. Why do we do what we do? We can see the worth and the value, like obviously, because that's why we're chasing it. That's why we're pursuing it. But Chiron retrograde is asking us at what cost? At what cost is the pursuit? At what cost is this? How do, and why? Like, why are we doing this? How does this make you who you are? If that's what you choose to believe, <laughs> just to bring in the whole Neptune retrograde in the sign of Pisces, because they all literally they all connect. So. I do want to tell you that the sun meeting up with Chiron retrograde and also the north node transiting through the sign of Aries, there's a lot of Aries energy, fire energy that's being activated here with the sun also sitting, uh, transiting the sign of Sagittarius and Mars transiting through the sign of Sagittarius, another fire sign. This has a lot to do with, okay, I'm doing this for me. I am doing this for me. This is who I am. And this is a wonderful way. This is also one of the things that I've been bringing to you guys on my TikTok and even on Instagram, affirmations. Affirmations are the things that we say to ourselves, the mantras that we say to ourselves that help to reprogram the brain and reprogram the mind so that how we identify is shaped into something that is empowering instead of disempowering, usually. And this is a the reason why I'm doing this is not because I'm into affirmations lately, although they are very powerful, but because Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries, and even now the North Node in the sign of Aries has affirmations written all over it. It's something that is meant to empower you to, the, to your core. It's what you tell yourself. It's what you believe about yourself. And from that place, if you believe that you can do it, if you believe that you are empowered, you can. You can, you end up being the leader and the advocate for yourself and then it ends up trickling down into everybody else because they believe in you, because you believe in yourself, because you have the courage, because you know what you're capable of. Now, I do wanna tell you guys that I am not the type of astrologer to break down every transit individually. I'm really big on taking a step back, looking at the bigger picture, looking in into the smaller details, taking a step back, looking at the bigger picture and putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but from 
this astrological transit, like from this chart and from this current time, like so much of this, even Saturn transiting through the sign of Pisces right now, it's the subconscious and the beliefs and the stories that we tell ourselves is being dismantled, is being corroded, is being evaporated, washed away. That can be very revealing and vulnerable. And from that place, like a hermit looking for their next shell, you have to find who you are now. You have to find the places that you fit. You have to create those spaces where you will fit and not wait for someone else or something else to tell you who you are, what is important to you, what you value. Now, this is not just going to be found in our intimate lives. We're also seeing this on a global level. We're also seeing this in mainstream media. Media, A lot of the powers that were set into place, and if you are an old friend of my YouTube channel, you know that this is not a new topic. I've been talking about this for quite some time. All of the powers that were kind of accepted and set into place and all these different positions of making major money, of, of um, controlling the masses or influencing the masses, whether it be entertainment, media, music, politics, government, finances, all of those areas, technology, those powers that have been set into place are in a season, long time, uh, under this transit, of being completely pulled apart. It started mostly with um, Saturn's transit through Capricorn. That's when we really started seeing karma being dealt dealt out and like divvied up. Then in the sign of Aquarius and now in the sign of Pisces, it really is a vulnerable place that the more, more powerful countries or the more powerful things that we've accepted that are just in positions of power, again, those same things that, is, that I've named before, are very, very vulnerable right now. This is where us individually, we are empowered if we allow ourselves to be because we can look at what is crumbling around us and say, oh my God, what happens now? I can't, I can't help this. I can't show up. I can't fight. I can't, but you can. It comes through your creative inspiration. It comes through how you are divinely guided. It comes through not the old ways that we are taught to fight and how we are um, told to show up, but how we are inspired to show up now. And a big, a big blessing for history right now is to teach and to show countries and these positions of power how to fall more into their feminine and that's going to be very receptive it's going to be very communicative it's going to be very reasonable in the sense of taking these different perspectives into consideration and finding finding a way to nurture and to nourish and to support them but it's tough because we're moving from the masculine which has become toxic masculine fighting um how, uh, abuse of power, abuse of control, active violation, disrespect. This has been a long time, just the way. And we've all of us as, as a society mo across the globe, we've almost ex we've accepted it. So this is what's crashing down and crumbling. And this is what we've all wanted. This is what we've all needed. But when we're watching it. Are you panicking? Are you watching it? And are you are you like, what's going to happen next? What does the future hold? And I want to tell you that it's easier said than done, right? These are the types of transits where the world as we know it is crashing and collapsing around us. In the few videos back when I started talking more candidly about these transits, these very difficult and historically like mind-blowing times in our history and we're living through this people there are a few comments of people saying Jess this is negative or leave your politics and your beliefs leave that I just want to say to those people and if this is how you are perceiving what it is I'm saying now I never 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 bring my personal opinion and my politics my personal life I never bring that onto my YouTube channel if you I've been on YouTube for a minute you you I promise you, you have no, you have no real idea of my personal beliefs because I don't post them everywhere. I don't post them anywhere on the internet. It's more things that I say to my close circle at the kitchen table because that's 
where it matters and it matters to me so this is not me projecting it's also not me being negative it's more that i'm astrology covers every aspect of our lives from politics to government to spending to our values to our psychology to our health to our healing to our death to our children to sex it covers all of those things and factually virgo here i'm sh i'm sharing what it is that i'm sh showcasing now again it's hard to separate that especially when there's it, you everyone has their own opinions they have their own agendas they have their own intentions my intention so that we're all clear is to show you what's going on globally to give you an explanation how you use that from from my from my channel is ultimately going to be up to you but this just for the sake of clarity i'm not here talking about my own specific insight um and i never will like i just i've always said that it's not responsible for me to do that um so what i'm saying now is um for the healing space or where the world is migrating towards in the realms of astrology from looking at the astrology chart is to start to build from a feminine space of again acceptance understanding listening compassion and that's where the bridge will be built okay so we can also show up for that in the ways that we feel each of us individually inspired to not only if you're feeling called in politics and government and business and finance and technology all of those things but also in your intimate life i think it was mother Teresa who said the quote um if you want to change the world begin with your own family and it's so true it's so true if you want to change the world if you start at your own family what can you do to heal within your own space and having said that many of you guys have learned and you're gonna definitely have to let me know down in the comments just put your hand up and be like i have learned just that's all you have to say yes i have learned let me know down in the comments if these transits have taught you a lot when it comes to boundaries in your in all of your relationships not just your intimate relationships and your love relationships but boundaries with your family boundaries with your friends with your friends boundaries with your work boundaries with your boss boundaries with the world social media the internet boundaries within yourself did you learn that was that a difficult lesson to learn for many of us it would have been as human beings we strive to come together we really do we're we're, we're people we're, we're creatures that do well in packs you know and to have boundaries in those same place where it might feel like you're separating from someone it's really you teaching people how to love you it's you learning how others like to be loved how others like to be talked to how what their needs are what your needs are and even how you can better show up for yourself so that's something to to really look into this week starting december 7th I mean already but you're gonna start to see more signs of that december 7th when sun is in that beautiful trine with chiron retrograde and also mercury is going to be trining jupiter who is now currently retrograde jupiter for those of you guys that don't know is the planet of abundance currently transiting through the sign of taurus and uh mercury here transiting through the sign of capricorn is trying to give a realistic approach to these changes that are being implemented in our life. What does this mean for us? This means something different for everyone, but I will say um, for many of us, this is about finding something that works, sticking with it. And also, even though Mercury trying Jupiter can give us this larger than life type of perspective, I really see this as you learning how to talk to yourself, to not be so hard on yourself, to not be so, to not beat yourself up on what you are doing and not doing. A part of me saying this is because even before I started recording this video or talking, sitting down to talk to you guys now about these transits, I actually got an intuitive download about this idea of like beating up, beating yourself up. So keep your eyes open for that, okay? The last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about could be a difficult transit, but more than anything, I just want to encourage you to use it for positive and it's the realms of excess, doing too much. How could that be a positive thing? Well, 
for some of you guys you're long overdue for some rest um december 9th venus is directly opposing jupiter jupiter currently retrograde what this could what this could look like could be doing too much again overeating overextending too much fun too much play too much drinking too much alcohol yes of course but i think that for many of us we are not going to use this as an excuse to overindulge we're going to use this as a time to restore ourselves because we could lean into the more toxic side of this um of these planets and say yeah i want i'm gonna eat 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 or do this and do this and do this just do too much no if anything i just feel like we're gonna use this in a positive thing i'm gonna find time to enjoy my life in as much diff as many different ways as i can this weekend i'm going to rest i'm going to go for a walk normally i take 30 minutes i'm gonna get lost i'm gonna allow myself to get lost and that's a wonderful way to to work with this transit I would not use this to make plans for the future, not because not because it's not sound and stable, but because in with transits like this, it's hard for us to see the ground, right? Think about this, right? Where I live, if you swim out into the ocean, you could be fine and then all of a sudden the, there will be like a steep cliff right all of a sudden the cliff underneath you the ground underneath you will dip out and you'll look down oh my gosh i went too far this is the energies that we are working with um this year and this is the energies that we're working with now it's almost like you go out for the swim and you're having fun and you lose track of the ground you lose track of what's around you and somehow you find that you are kind of in a space that could be dangerous to you or could be detrimental to you. These are one of those things where it's like, let's not bring that into our plans, not that let's not bring that into our relationships. Now let's not bring that into our life. Let's th use this as I'm going to find a way to not make it harder for myself in the future. I'm gonna make it easier for me to enjoy my present. And as again, as many different ways in a multitude of different ways and not make any like commitment. Why is it difficult for plans for the future? Well, because we have a lot of planets right now that are currently retrograde. And when it comes to retrogrades, I really need you guys to put a pin into December 13th, Mercury is going to go retrograde. Um, and Mercury rules the planet, especially in the sign of Capricorn. It's gonna be really tough for us to follow through on those commitments. You may have to reconsider and readjust by a lot during this mercury retrograde if you're if you aren't already i know i am and it's not that it's intentional it's not that you are trying to break promises or not show up or it's just that life is happening and it's happening quick and a lot of things are changing very rapidly so it's in your best interest to not put more pressure undue pressure on yourself because it's just not needed right now it's okay. It's okay to give yourself a lot of grace. Remember, remember that big lesson that we're learning right now. Surrender. Surrender. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for the time being. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. It would really mean the world to me. If you are someone who is coming in and passing through, you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, I understand. It was a blessing. It was an honor. For those of you guys that are currently subscribed, check your subscription right now. <laughs> because I've been hearing a lot that YouTube is really going through it, like mass, Instagram too, is kind of um, having like a mass exodus of like people getting spontaneously unsubscribed from YouTubes. Even my closest friends and family who stay up are, are the ones who have been texting me like, Jess, I was unsubscribed from your YouTube channel. I don't even know what happened. And, but I knew that you posted, so I went to go look for you. And when I went to go look, I saw that I was unsubscribed. It's not a matter, this is not just my channel, it's a lot of chan channels. If you look at what's going on astrologically, it makes a lot of sense. Social media is breaking down. And I've been saying that for over a year now. We never thought that it would happen because again, we've all accepted that this was our reality. But you know, it is what it is. Like. There's people who are going to do really well. They're kind of shooting up. And then there's people who their channels are just why? Because the platforms that rule them, the foundation that rules those businesses, that social media, those things, those entities are really they're really struggling right now. 
So it goes deeper than just us as content creators and people who are sharing on the internet. There's a bigger beast that's, you know, stumbling around all over the globe. So just double check that you are subscribed. If you are subscribed, I wouldn't trust it. I would even unsubscribe and resubscribe and turn on your notifications. It'll help out. And um, let me know about Astro Chat Live. I do miss you guys. I don't want to overpromise anything, especially, especially with this video that I'm saying. Like, you know, you just got to be very careful about um, what you can and cannot do because there's, again, these energies are so different. We do need to talk about uh, the new moon in Sagittarius. That's going to be next week on Tuesday at 6.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So do make sure that you've got your notifications turned on for that, that you're following me on TikTok or Instagram because I post updates there. And if you would like to go a step further or just join me and my family, my community here, you can subscribe to Bahati Life newsletter and you'll get updates on new posts and videos as they come, especially updates on the apothecary readings, etc., etc. But for right now, everything is closed while I'm catching up and making space and time for the holidays for family because we're in that we're in that time and closing out this year like wow so let me know what your rising sign is um, down below and feel free to talk to me in emoji how you're feeling i'm going to be going through those comments and looking in it helps me and doing my homework as an astrologer to continue to grow until then you guys i'm sending you all of my love and i'll see you guys in my next one